It is springtime in the Southern California desert. Cactus plants are blooming and insects are enjoying the nectar. The temperature is still pleasant and every year, around this time, the great migration takes place. In April and May, every day, 50 hikers, about 2,000 total, gather around the American-Mexican border and they are anxious to go on their long journey north across the United States. And after a year of training and making resupply boxes for the wilderness areas, they head out on their big adventure. The journey takes them through the harsh and hot environment of the California deserts where finding enough water and shade is a big issue. At the end of the desert they change into mountain gear so they can deal with the cold winter conditions and cross the snow-covered regions of the Sierra Nevada that holds some of the biggest mountains of the United States. It is summer when they reach Northern California and forest fires are everywhere. They enter a green world of immense forests and impressive volcanoes that dominate the landscape of Oregon. Then they arrive in Washington state and after crossing some steep mountains again, they hit the border of Canada. And we, we will follow up two hikers that try to make it all the way. Some of them start hiking early in the morning to do most of the distance in the coolest part of the day. They have to study the water report regularly to make sure they have enough drinking water in this hot and dry climate, which usually means carrying five to six liters of water every day. And sometimes they have to sit in the shade to wait out the heat of the day. The desert is an extreme place. On the lower elevations it's hot, but on the higher peaks there is ice and freshly fallen snow.
water is scarce in the desert. But sometimes they encounter a place that feels like an oasis. And in those moments, they relax for a moment and rest their tired feet. The desert has very poisonous plants, like the poodle dog bush, which gives big nasty itching blisters that can last for a month, so they have to be really careful not to touch them. Trail angels are awesome people. 
They can sometimes surprise the hikers with food and drinks, like now. Or store their resupply packages for them, or offer them rides to town. And sometimes they invite them even into their homes, where they can relax for a moment or show off their beards. Or be creative. But it is always about their love and care for the hikers and the trail. And about enjoying each other's company. In the Mojave Desert there are stretches of 70 kilometers, that's about 50 miles without any water. And the only way for them to get through it is to carry a lot of water on their pack. Or, if they're lucky, they get help from a trail angel who stocks water for them. But that's not even enough, so they get their water from unusual places like rainwater collectors and cow troughs. <laughs> it took the hikers five weeks to cross the desert section and they're now in Kennedy Meadows where they change clothing and gear to get ready for the cold and snowy section of the Sierra Nevada mountain range. Here they will hike 35 kilometers a day in high altitudes. Geen idee wat het is. Beer! Hé, hey, beer! Yo, hé, oh, hey, beer! Yo, beer! Hé, hey, beer! Yo, oh, hé, hey, beer! Hé, hey, beer! Yo, beer! Yo, oh, hé, hey, beer!
bijna daar. Op de top van uh, Mount Whitney. Uh, hoogste is de top van uh, de lagere Verenigde Staten. Uh, we zijn er bijna. Ja, hoogste punt. 14.500 nog wat voet. Ik moet even uitzoeken hoeveel het is, maar ik dacht iets van 4.500 meter of zo. Oh. Ja, dit is een noodhut. We zitten momenteel in de wolken. Maar de andere kant laat ik je zo zien. Die is wel heel erg tof. naar boven. The Sierra Nevada mountain range is a roller coaster and very challenging. Every day they have to climb and descend 1500 to 2000 meters to get to a pass. Plus they now cover a distance of 35 kilometers a day with about 15 kilos on their back. And the mountains are very remote so sometimes they have to hike out of the mountains to get some resupply and then hike back up again.
The mountains are a big contrast with the desert and instead of hunting for water, it is now everywhere. And it's giving them some new challenges. Although water is plentiful in the mountains, it has been a winter with hardly any snow, making this one of the driest years on record. And the lakes are almost empty. Spring is turning into summer, and there are flowers everywhere.
The mountains are slowly becoming less steep, and in a couple of days, they hit the town of South Lake Tahoe, where they prepare themselves for the northern part of California. After two days of shopping and making food boxes for the coming month, they are anxious to continue their journey into desolation wilderness. Fierce lightning is striking and the tension is rising dramatically. Time to put on some rain gear. The storm is approaching fast and there is nowhere to go on this 8 mile exposed ridge. After climbing the highest mountain in the continental United States and crossing the spectacular high mountain section of the Sierra Nevada, it is now time to relax for a moment and enjoy a good meal with some good friends in the old gold mine town of Sierra City.
Oh, living on the trail. Take my hand, we'll make it out there. Oh, living on the trail. Living on the trail. Northern California is very hot, and now they hit one of the hottest sections of the trail, the Head Creek Rim. Many decide to hike this section at night. The Rim Trail is not only hot, but also without drinking water for about 42 kilometers. That's a marathon. Just before the Rim is a cool lava cave, where they wait out the hottest part of the day and load up with water before they set out into the night.
They were eating their cinnamon roll that they just bought in Etna, and there he was, a bear. Normally hikers do not encounter that many bears on the trail, but they are there, and there are lots of them. The signs are everywhere, like claw marks on the trees, and every now and then they find footprints. And for some reason, bears like to poop right on the trail. Normally, they're not aggressive and only interested in the food the hikers carry. And for that reason, food is stored in a bear-proof food container. Or, they store their food in an odor-proof bag and hang it in a tree on a branch. But bears are not their only hazard problem. There are fires near the trail, and they're heading straight for one of them.
They are now in Ashland and are creating their resupply boxes for the whole of Oregon. But before they got there, they went through the hot Northern California section, where they passed the halfway point of the trail. They are now heading for the enormous green forest of Oregon, which holds some really spectacular volcanoes. After that, they will go to the Bridge of the Gods at Cascade Locks. It was a very beautiful evening and they hiked along the crater in very good spirits. But what they first thought as being evening clouds turned out to be really bad smoke that was slowly filling the crater like a wizard's cauldron. The thick smoke made breathing unbearable and a fireman had to bring them down from the rim. He brought them back to Mazama village to spend the night. The next morning the wind had shifted and the scenery was stunning again. But the fire was still there, and it was far from over. It grew to a really big fire, and they were lucky that they could still pass it. Two days later, the trail was closed, and a lot of hikers got stuck and had to do a detour.
They arrive at Timberline Lodge. Time to get the latest fire updates. And the news is bad. The trail at Mount Adams just closed and the other big fires in Washington are still raging on. Deep negative thoughts are filling their minds. Depression is now setting in with a lot of hikers. They've conquered so much already, but there is now no way to continue the trail all the way to Canada. And this is very disappointing for them. So, with pain in their hearts, a lot of hikers are thinking of leaving the trail. at Cascade Locks with hope and fear. What now? Where did it go from there? The fires are still blocking some major parts of the trail and negative thoughts are starting to have its effect on many hikers. And also on them. So the first thing they do is have a good meal with a friend, unwrap some awesome surprises from family and leave the trail scene for a moment. They go to the nearby city of Portland to visit some other friends. They've had enough of the negative thoughts and mind games of the last part of the trail. It is time to do some homework and get their heads straight. While in Portland, they do a lot of research to alternative routes. They talk to rangers and local trail angels. And they watch the local news. And finally, some good news arrives. There is a reroute around Mount Adams and they can now go for three quarters of the way, all the way into Washington. And they make a big decision. It is time to conquer fear again. These last fires wouldn't stop them, they will find a way around them. So after two days of making resupply packages, they headed back to Cascade Locks. They visit the Pacific Crest Trail days and say goodbye to a lot of friends that go home and leave the trail.
The plan is to do the Mount Adams reroute, hike through the beautiful Gold Rush Mountains, hike close to Mount Rainier and continue to Skykomis where they will plan the rest of the way. But they will get to the border. Canada, here they come. They cross the Bridge of the Gods, straight into the lush vegetation of Washington. And it was a good thing they changed into bad weather gear in Portland. Because Washington welcomed them with a fierce storm and pouring rain. Clouds are getting lower, the first snow is falling, and they still have to climb to Knife's Edge. After several days of hiking, they hit a dirt road where very sweet trail angels surprised them with a lunch of fresh food, vegetables, snacks and burgers. They wanted to give the hikers some extra support because they know that they're doing about a marathon a day to get to the border before the snow will cover the mountains. And although they wanted to, the hikers couldn't stay long. They have to push forwards. Snow might be coming soon.
Hiking these incredible long distances in a day means that they are burning about 5 to 6 thousand calories every day. And although they do their best to put in as much calories as they can, it is still not enough. And after four and a half months of hiking, weight loss can be as much as 15 kilos. It is getting later in the year and the seasons are changing again. Deer are grazing and the antlers of the elk are almost ready for fighting. It is also the time for berries and they are abundant and really good to eat. Autumn is now in full swing and gives them spectacular colors. It sometimes feels like they're hiking in a Japanese garden or like hiking in a painting. Zo, wat eten we? Appelwood smoked bacon met appeltjes. Smoked bacon met appeltjes. Puree. Mm. Within a day they reached Sky Komis and it really made them happy. No reroute was needed. The rain of the last weeks put an end to the extreme fire that was blocking the trail. And they can now go all the way to Canada.
They are now in Stehekin, the last small settlement on the trail, before Canada. There are no connecting roads, so the only way to get there is by float plane, boat or hiking. It is now day 162, the 24th of September, the last day of their big adventure through the United States. There's a place I go to when no one knows me. Hey. It's not long. It's a necessary thing. Welcome it's to Canada. Hey, we're saying it. Find out what I mean. The nights are still. Counting the stars. Let me show you. Yeah, you're a morning star. And, uh, Monster, yeah, and Everybody got the reason, everybody got the way. We're just catching and releasing what builds up throughout the day. It gets into your body and it flows right through your blood. We can tell each other secrets and remember how to love. Da 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 there's a place I'm going No one knows me If I breathe real slowly I let it out and let it in It can be terrifying To be slowly dying Also clarifying We end where we begin so let it wash over me I'm ready to lose my feet Take me off to the place where one reveals life's mystery Steady on down the line Lose every sense of time Take it all in and wake up that small part of me Day to day I'm blind to see And find how far to go Everybody got the reason Everybody got the way We're just catching and releasing What builds up throughout the day And it gets into your body Flows right through your blood We can tell each other secrets And remember how to love 
Everybody got their reason Everybody got their way We're just catching and releasing What builds up throughout the day And it gets into your body And it flows right through your blood We can tell each other secrets And remember how to love 